record button. Here we are. All set. All right, I would like to call the February 8th, 2022 meeting of the planning board to order, please. Karen, could you call the roll? Bob Darty's absent. Jim Callahan? Here. Kevin Donovan's absent. Dave Edmonds? Here. Carolyn Turner? Here. Mike Ventresca is absent. Chair Claudia Bolgan? Here. First item on the agenda is a public hearing, a continued public hearing on Legacy Lane subdivision, modification request to retain the roadway as a private way to be maintained by the Private Homeowners Association, rather than have the road become a public way maintained by the city after completion of construction. Um, Tina, what are we doing with this today? So uh, just to recap, the board has continued this hearing a couple of times to seek guidance from the city solicitor on a number of points related to private way ownership versus public ways, and also to get some additional information from the applicant relative to proposed regulatory signage he would put up in the subdivision if the roadway were to remain a private way. Uh, since the meeting, we uh, last meeting in January, we uh, sent a letter of clarification or a memo requesting clarification to the city solicitor who had previously offered us an opinion on some of those matters. She has responded to that memo, uh, a follow-up that we sent in January, and we received that this afternoon, and it was provided this afternoon to the applicant's counsel, attorney Joe Tarby. In the interim, we also received a couple of photographs from one of the Michenzies to give the board an idea of the kind of situations that were occurring on their uh, roadway that sort of prompted the request. We also um, received some additional information on the signage, although the information we've received to date is not quite complete and is not quite reconciling with the plan that had been provided previously. Um, Attorney Tarby, having been provided a copy of the city solicitor's latest opinion, asked and has filed with us a request uh, seeking a continuance of the hearing this evening without discussion to the board's next meeting on February 22nd. He wanted an opportunity to thoroughly read and understand the opinion and then be able to confer with his client um, before addressing the board on its contents. So attorney Tarby is available to join us this evening and with just several moments notice if the board would like him to, but he did file a written request for a continuance and the date of February 22nd, your next meeting is fine with respect to his request. Um, Tina, can I ask a question? If we, if we uh, decide as a board that that's a good idea, if we simply uh, continue the public hearing without taking any testimony or any discussion, does that make it possible for those members to join us next time who may have already um, missed an, a, a meeting on this issue? And is that of importance for a quorum? Well, it's a very good point. It would be at least one reason to support um, the request, uh, even uh, aside from its face, is the fact that we have three members missing this evening. I know that at least uh, Kevin and Bob could review a tape of this brief segment of the hearing and qualify themselves to participate again at the next meeting. I am not certain about Mike. He has already missed one segment and he qualified himself to participate, but having missed now, this would be number two. I don't believe there's a way that he can participate going forward. So yes, on two. All right. All right. So um, what what is the will of the board on this issue? I'd like to make a motion to continue the uh, Legacy Lane uh, petition till February 22nd. Excuse me for interrupting. Um, Ms. Bogan, I think we should open the hearing or at least uh, open the hearing and see if there's anybody that would like to speak and address the board. We do seem to have one guest. Oh, well, that's a very good point. So this is a public hearing. If anyone would like to speak on this matter, if you could uh, listen to the planning board director's directions on how to uh, raise hand function to let us know you'd like to speak. So if you would like to speak, please take the cursor of your computer and hover it over the reactions button at the bottom of your screen. 
And if you click on that reactions button, you'll see one inside that says raised hand. If you click on that, we'll know that you would like to speak and do that now if you would. And uh, Madam Chairman, I do not see a hand raised. All right, so uh, Jim, would you like to remake your motion? I'd like to make a motion to continue the hearing until February 22nd. At Is 7 there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. Um, Karen, could you call the roll please? Jim Callahan. Aye. Dave Edmonds. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Chair Claudia Wogan. Aye. That would be four in favor, none opposed. The matter stands continue to our next meeting. And is our next meeting February 22nd? February 22nd uh, uh, and uh, the time? hearing will be continued to 7 p.m. All right. Thank you. Great, thank you. Next on the agenda under subdivisions is Legacy Lane expiration of construction completion date. Um, do we need to uh, formally address that and continue it or simply put it on the agenda for next time? We'll table it and put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Excellent. Next on the agenda under subdivisions is Baker Way, expiration of construction completion date, David Baker. Um, I, what what planning, what Tina shall, shall we uh, uh, have to hear about this particular matter? Well, Mr. Baker uh, has filed at our request uh, an extent a request in turn to extend the completion date to May 30th of this year. We had a productive meeting, uh, myself, his attorney and Mr. Baker met virtually last week to figure out a course of action to bring to completion the subdivision. Um, we think we have a task on both the city side and on the private side and uh, giving a continuance to May 30th we feel would be ample time for us to hopefully resolve the matters uh, that remain outstanding. So what I would request is that the board consider extending the completion date on Baker Way to May 30th, 2022. All right, is there any discussion? Otherwise I'd entertain a motion. Move. All right, a motion by Dave to allow the request to uh, continue the expiration of the completion date to what was it, May 30th? May 30th, May 30th, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jim. If there's no further discussion, Karen, could you conduct a roll call vote, please? Jim Callahan? Aye. Dave Edmonds? Aye. Carolyn Turner? Aye. Chair Claudia Bogan? Aye. That is four in favor, none opposed. The motion carries. Next on the agenda, I have planning board director update. Tina. Uh, quickly, just two things I think for us to cover. The next meeting will be on February 22nd, uh, 2022. Uh, on that agenda will be the continuation, obviously, of the legacy lane modification request. But the board will also have a continuation of the hearing on the Zero Village Street uh, roadway improvement plan that's been filed. There will also be discussion of the extensions of completion dates for the Robertson Way, Carlson Way, and Pearl Street subdivisions, and discussion of potential increases to fees charged by the planning board. I also just would add, besides um, that agenda, two things. We should talk about in a moment whether or not that meeting is virtual or in person. But I want to add beside that, um, you will be getting within the next probably three to four weeks, maybe earlier than that, notification from me. The, the Mayor Galvin and I, I talked today about a new a law that was adopted by the state in, uh, last year called the Housing Choice Act. And it has some of its provisions have significant ramifications on the city. Um, unless the city is willing to do some pretty aggressive rezoning with respect to multifamily housing, um, it may be precluded from applying for certain grants. As an MBTA community, there is an expectation that comes with this law that communities which have MBTA service will take bolder steps to create additional housing units in the city, not necessarily affordable, 
but housing. So um, one of the tenets of the law um, says that, uh, or the provisions that come with it, say that we can make a public presentation and should to the city council um, of what the implications of the new law are on the community and, and sort of engage in a discussion about some of those impacts. So the mayor and I intend to do that within the next several weeks, um, certainly by March. So just to be on the lookout for that, it'll come with a better explanation than I'm giving you off the cuff this, this evening. So right. that leads Here's us to discussion question. of, yes. Have they bothered to look at Wuben's growth? I mean, so the I, I, I know what they're saying, but you know, I grew up in Cambridge. I would hate to see, I mean, I'd love to see the, you know, things would be nice, but I like Wuben better, but I'd hate to see us so congested like the city of Cambridge where we're allowing, you know, I mean, we're building stuff all over the place. I, I'm confused here. One of the very unfortunate impacts or uh, things about this law is that there is zero recognition for what communities may have done in the past or even the very recent past. To your point, the city of Woburn all in, not necessarily near its train station, but let's stay focused on the train station because that is the MBTA station in the city that would be the most likely candidate. It would be our qualifying um, um, facility under this law. We have created a thousand or 50, 1200 units in that area when you think about the mall and 120 Commerce Way and 200 Presidential and zero New Boston Street and whatever they have, 316 New Boston Street. You add those up and you've got over a thousand units and none of those uh, lend any credit at all toward uh, the, this law. So um, that's one of the points we'll make. It's one of the, certainly the shortcomings that I see. I don't think we're unique, but we have managed to create housing units um, without some of these bolder steps that the law now requires. And as I said, we're not getting any credit, at least in this, in this case for it. So that's, um, that's to be uh, expanded upon when we meet with the council. So you'll be invited as a board. And if a majority of you are able to attend, we'll post it as a special meeting. So the quorum is recognized. That, that leaves us with the question then of whether or not our next meeting on February 22nd should be virtual or in person. All right, um, is there any uh, board member that would like to engage in a discussion of that? What's the downside I, of doing, oh, I'm sorry. Dave, what's the downside of doing? Uh, maintaining this. Could, could I, would it help, uh, Chair, uh, if, if I may? So a couple of things, David. Um, when we opened or were about to open the public hearing on Zero Village uh, Street, we had one of the residents of the area write to us specifically and ask if we could consider holding the meeting in person. They knew of a couple of people who were very uncomfortable, um, didn't really know how to engage on a computer and several others that didn't have a computer at all. So it's kind of an unusual request, but it, so, but that makes it an interesting one, certainly for me. I guess the other one is, I remember that there were at least a couple of board members who expressed at a meeting maybe in December or so, because we've talked about this fairly frequently, which is a great thing. And I remember at least two of the members saying that they really preferred to meet in person. They found it much more productive and, um, a whole different experience, much more engaged when they met in person as opposed to the virtual format. So they've been very patient and good with us about having the meetings virtually, but I am mindful that numbers are declining and that they would like to meet in person and we haven't done that for quite some time. So there seem to be, I don't know if there's any reason to keep not to keep doing this except for snowstorms, which would be ideal. Um, but I, you know, I guess I was at least personally thinking about maybe um, meeting the February 22nd meeting in person, if members were open to that, just to kind of honor um, those two requests. Claudia? Uh, yes, um, that was one of the folks that thought the in-person was uh, 
more productive for myself. Um, with the continuations and the review of close out of projects that we've been reviewing of late, um, kind of changed my stance a bit where I think that the zone meetings are uh, sufficient for most of these activities. Uh, I would tend to lend my uh, February 22nd towards a in-person meeting because of the, the uh, petitioners, um, about us and a lot of family members involved and uh, their lack of technologies uh, savvy. So I'm not opposed to that. But I think overall, I think the agenda could drive with whether we do it in person or by Zoom, some of these. But they're more technical and there's gonna be more citizen petition participation, it may be wiser to do in person if everyone feels comfortable, of course. Uh, but, you know, when they're just a technical review and close out of projects, I think the Zoom is more than sufficient. Good to know. Jim, are you all set? Yes, I am, thank you. Okay. Um, Carolyn, do you have a thought? Um, I actually don't, you know, don't have a preference um, but if I had to choose, I think it might be good to get back in person um, when we can. Although I do um, agree with Jim to the extent we say when we're just closing out projects and doing certain, certain agenda items, I think that the Zoom meetings are sufficient. Um, you know, everybody's still here, present, participating, reviewing the materials. So I, you know, I, I certainly think that we're doing our job and and um, you know, staff is preparing us the same as, as they always have. And I, I think it's okay. Um, the only thing, Jim, that, that you said, um, you know, if we were to take it on a case by case, agenda by agenda basis, I think we could do that as far as completion dates and whatnot, if we sort of group general categories together but as far as sort of picking and choosing, if it's a public hearing, I think that could be problematic. I think it, do you know what I'm saying? Um, if we have just technical matters or closeout matters, I think that's okay. But as far as, you know, like I said, picking and choosing from public hearings to the extent that's even possible, I don't think that's a great idea because I'm sure people would not be so open to that, depending on the project, depending on the neighborhoods. So I think I'd be a little bit more careful with that, if that makes sense. Carolyn, are you good? I am. Okay. So Jim, I thought that was a, a good suggestion. I think that there are communities, um, projects, uh, persons that are more able to participate in person, in a public meeting, such as the one we run. And then there are people who are more apt to participate if it's virtual. And you're not gonna make everybody happy all the time, I think with whichever one you choose. So the idea of um, taking this opportunity to see if there's the best of both worlds that can be possible that say if we had two meetings a month, we had a virtual meeting and a in-person meeting. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think we can probably feel our way towards working that out to see in terms of all of the constituencies that we serve, um, that uh, the, the public, the um, applicants, um, board members, staff, you know, everybody's interest that is involved in making this a go, this whole uh, planning board organization work. Um, I think that it sort of remains to be seen, you know, what's the best idea going forward. But, but the idea of sort of feeling our way, you know, meeting by meeting, as we sit here in February of 2022, I think does make a lot of sense. And I think next meeting, because of the project and because of the 
um, sense that we have that the public that we're serving in this particular instance would be better served by a meeting in person makes me think next meeting should be in person. And then at the next meeting, I think there's nothing to prevent us from looking forward and, and, and making the judgment what makes sense for the first meeting in March, what makes good sense for the second meeting in March and, and take it meeting by meeting if members are comfortable with that. All right, well, I don't see anybody else jumping in. So why don't we schedule the next meeting for February 22nd to be in person at the city council chambers at seven o'clock? Um, as I, we are invited back to the city council chambers, we, I would assume. We are, and we actually have the room okay. reserved. <laughs> okay, good enough. So I just don't wanna mislead folks. Yes. Um, yes. So we will be uh, meeting next time in person at our normal space at seven o'clock. And then uh, what we do for the meeting after that, well, that'll be an agenda item. All right, so I don't see anybody um, taking that amiss. So let's work with that. And then we will move on to our agenda as to approval of minutes, January 25th, 2022, virtual meeting. Do we have enough people who attended that meeting here to approve those minutes? Just making sure. I think everyone was at the last meeting. First. Yes, okay. we had a full house. Thanks, yeah. All right. So assuming that all four attendees currently approve the minutes, then they would be approved. So I will, I will uh, await a motion from the membership. Make a motion to accept the draft meeting minutes. All right, from motion by- Tuesday, January 25th, 2022 meeting. All right, motion by Carolyn to accept the minutes as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jim. Hearing no further discussion, Karen, would you take a roll call vote, please? Jim Callahan? Aye. David, I'm sorry. David Aye. Edmonds? Aye. Carolyn Turner? Aye. And Chair Claudia Bogan? Aye. That's four in favor. None opposed. That motion carries. Are there any other business matters that may legally come before the board not known at the time of posting? Not from staff. Alrighty, then the only thing left is adjournment. Would someone like to make that motion? Motion to adjourn. All right, motion to adjourn at 722, made by Dave. Is there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. No further discussion. I'd ask Karen to take a roll call vote, please. Jim Callahan. Aye. Dave Edmonds. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Chair Claudia Bogan. Aye. Four in favor, none opposed. The meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much, Karen and Tina. Thank you very much. We will see each other um, in person uh, on the 22nd. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Happy Valentine's right. Day. Thank you. Stay well, be well, everyone.